Hello, everybody. Hey, Brandy, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine, fine, thank you. Thank you for joining. Happy Monday. Yeah, I could not miss this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandy. Hi, how are you? Is that Lisa or Elena? It's Lisa. I'm trying to get my camera on. I'm not, oh, that would help if I turn, hit this, right? Hello. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing well. Hi, Elena. Hi, how are you? It's so nice to see you. I didn't expect yeah. you to join today. Yeah, nice. I saw it and I had an opening, so I snapped it up with this. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for joining. I'm sure. looking, does anybody know on Zoom, I'm trying to find the chat setting that allows the host to see the chats that are happening as they come through. Um, do you guys know where that setting is? Anybody? Sorry, I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right, just asking. Cause I saw it the other day on one of the other calls I was on. I was like, that's nice. Cause on these Monday calls, I can't see when you guys are chatting what you're saying in the chat unless I go open it. That's okay. All right, what's the time? We'll give it a couple minutes, okay? That was everybody's weekend. It was good until it turned cold. It got cold today, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's only it's only a week of cold and then we'll get we'll get really warm again. Yes. Yeah. All right, let me share my screen. I'll get that going. Share, share. Can y'all see my screen? Yep. Awesome. And um, just so y'all know, if you want uh, to listen back to this, you can find this video after the call on YouTube under the Strengthology Leadership Insights channel. And um, you can sign up to Strengthology Insights uh, if you'd like to get these types of insights for your strengths. Um, and I also post these slides to LinkedIn afterward. So you can always go over to my profile and look at my posts and see the slides that we're going over if you'd like to reference them. Any other questions that you guys have before we get started? Is my face brighter today? I'm trying a fancy light. It no is one. brighter. <laughs> I needed a fancy light. Okay. Um, if you guys give presentations, you can try it. It looks like this and it has a little clip and it just clips right onto your device. Like if you have a laptop or um, a phone or whatever, and then it gives you that, that Hollywood glow. <laughs> 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 All right, let's get going. Um, Today, we are gonna talk about our maximizers. You guys can see that maximizer only shows up in a person's top five strength 13% of the time, which is a little bit more rare than some of the ones that are found most often like responsibility learner and achiever. It falls into Gallup's leadership domain on the, on the orange which is an influencing strength. And I find this one very interesting because um, it cares so much about elevating people's performance. However, it's not necessarily a relationship building skill. The function isn't to build the relationship with somebody and get to know them and get close to them, but rather understand what they do best in order to help them leverage their strengths 
and um, to to add value or productivity to the world. So it, it's interesting that way because as you read it and you go through it, you're going to think, oh, this person is a people person. And you're like, yes, they are a people person, but it's not necessarily a function of, of building relationships and getting close and, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a fine line, right? Because they do build trust. Um, they do a lot of the relationship building functions, but it, the goal or the intent or the reason behind it is not to build a relationship. It's to get someone to do something, which is to help them become, you know, their most elite self. When we look at the strength zones, I find that this one is very difficult to place because what it does is it essentially maximizes everybody else on the screen. Uh, so I've put it in the second zone, although I think it kind of splits the second and the seventh zone because it is a perfectionist strength. It is, it is wanting things taken to, um, a heightened level, but it also is a great coach, which means that they get people doing what they do best every day in an influential way, which, you know, made me stick it fully in that second category where, you know, this is the category where people get people excited and involved and engaged to be able to move forward uh, in a certain direction. All right. So people with maximizer attract and transform elite talent to produce excellence and everlasting greatness. So you're going to see a lot of words on the screens today about superb, excellence, um, you know, elite, experts, you know, any of these words that say, look, this person is above average. They're, they're, um, you know, they've, they've mastered their trade or they are a professional at what they do. Um, they are a top performer. These are the types of people that maximizers really gravitate towards because they are interested in how do people become top, top performers? How do I maximize talent? How do, and they don't just do it with people, by the way. I've had uh, maximizers maximize my PowerPoint presentations. They say, you know, if you just did this, you could take it to that next level. Um, I've seen them function that way at a, at a high level. When you have like, for example, a um, CEO maximizer, you might have someone that buys, for example, not the low end hotels, but the higher end hotels and then takes those to the next level. They, they maximize them. Um, they are typically great coaches, mentors, and teachers. They are very, very um, keen on focusing on strengths and not weaknesses. They really find focusing on people's weaknesses and the things that they're not doing well, a waste of time. And so they're, they're, all, they're all about this strength-based program that we talk about every week. And, and Don Clifton was a maximizer, which is part, part of it. He's the one who said, look, we have found, you know, studies have shown that if you do focus on people's strengths rather than their weaknesses, then they are going to be at their best, perform better, be happier. Um, and it's a win-win for, for everybody. They do like to measure people's performance as well. So they have a little bit of measurement um, aspect to their personality. Any questions for the maximizers on the call? I know we have a couple on the call. So is there any um, questions for them from anybody on, on the call that's not a maximizer? Not yet? Okay. All right. So maximizer, when somebody has this in their top five strengths, it actually maximizes all the other strengths around it. So it's an intensifier naturally. And if anyone has it, you can already assume that they, they do have a little bit of heightened intensity to the, to the aspect of their personality. When they are partnered or paired with these strengths, so someone has maximizer and achiever in their top five strengths, they're even going to be more intensified. One, in achiever is an intensifier. So when you have an achiever maximizer and a maximizer achiever, it's, they're just, it's a really heightened combination. I didn't really elaborate on command. I'm staring at it going, <laughs> yes, it commands maximization and it maximizes command. I'm not sure why I thought that one was any different than the other ones that, that maximizer maximizes. Um, probably because they're both highly influential and they get people doing things. 
Um, and command comes at it of more of like, do what I say, you know, do, do what I tell you to do where maximization is. Let me, um, help you see why you should do that, why it would be good for you. But I suppose, uh, both are getting people to do something that they might not have done otherwise. Now competition has to win and be at the top. Maximizers have to take things to the next level, next level. So you could understand why if you have maximizer and competition in your top five, then you're going to be pretty intense around that. If you have a developer and maximizer strength together in your top five strengths, that also heightens because both of those have coaching aspects to them. So developers are going to nurture and grow the people that are brand new to the team where maximizers seeking you know, who are going to be the top performers and let me help take those people to the next level, to a level of excellence. So if you have both, then you're doing a lot of coaching for both the, the underdeveloped and the, um, the, uh, the ones that are overperforming already. If you have maximizer individualization, you're also going to have an intensified strength set because um, you're really focusing on how people tick, how they're motivated, how they're wired, what they do best every day, you know, what turns them off, what turns them on, and then how to take that, that, that high performance that you're able to establish by understanding their motivations. Um, and, and now you take it to the next level and help them maximize it. If you have relator and maximizer in your top five strengths, you're also going to be uh, a bit heightened because maximizers are a bit selective based on the fact that they really gravitate towards those high performers. Relators are also a bit selective because they gravitate towards people who they relate with. So then if you get a relator maximizer, you might have someone that's a little exclusive in, especially in their, clo their close relationships, the people who they allow in their inner circle. And then a maximizer significance is going to be heightened. Significance wants to make a significant impact. Maximizers want to turn the elite into everlasting greatness. So if you have both and you're really trying to have a huge impact, um, be seen, do something big. This is, this is what Don Clifton had. He had maximizer significance. Do any of you have these intensifications that we discussed today? And can you share with the group a little bit about having those intensifications, what it's like for you? Sylvia, don't make me call you out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do have a maximizer as my number one. I um, do have developer as number four and individualization as number seven. Yes. Yeah, it makes, um, it is so relevant to me. It makes so much um, um, sense. Because um, I, I can see how this really, how um, my maximizer is intensified, right? It's like adding two more, um, it's, um, um, how you say that, the volume, right? It's adding two lines to, to the volume. And um, while developer, for example, um, it's very patient and it's looking for um, every progress the maximizer um, goes only for, identifies um, the ones that are the top performers. And also individualization helps a lot because um, as you say here, it's um, understand how someone is motivated. And this is very true because the motivation comes um, from inside the, the people, right? So it's not something right. that I, I have to, or I do something so you get motivated. I interesting here is that individualization helps me to see what, I, what is exactly what triggers you, right? So how to make you tick, right? right. And, so, and then how to elevate that. Right, so you're like how a mega to coach. Bring it to the top. Yeah, because you can you can see what how someone is motivated in order to develop when they're when they're first coming into something, and then you can see how to take them to that next level, and it really allows you to coach most people at whatever point they are in their life, right? To meet them right where they are and to coach them right in that in that moment, um, it 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 just makes you a coach that can coach just about anybody. 
Um, but since your maximizer is your number one, then for you personally, it's probably a little more fun, you know, to coach top talent. Um, you know, although it's great, right, coaching and developing and nurturing people so that they can come on board, it's um, mm -hmm. probably mm -hmm. more fun for you to coach the the more elite right. talent that you come across. Right. So, yeah. Right. That's absolutely. It's helping them to to see what we with the maximizers see they have right, right. as a value and how they can add value to mm -hmm. what they are already doing or even to yeah. others. Right. Right. So right. Yeah, how they can be their best bet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. So thank you, by the way, for sharing. Yeah, that's why that. I love awesome. coach. Yeah. <laughs> um, so maximizer is most often paired with strategic. I don't know if you guys knew that, but it's paired together 30% of the time with strategic. Uh, it's, it's like never paired with restorative. Um, I did work with someone who did have maximizer and restorative. That was like a one in 33 million chance, right? That I'm ever going to meet somebody who has both maximizer and restorative in their top five strengths. Um, and that person was really interesting because he would build stuff and restore stuff and fix it, but then he'd also take it to the next level. He wouldn't just stop at fixing it. He would, he would make it shiny at the end. Um, so uh, maximizers um, may not do their best work when they are working with a belief person because just because belief has a focus on helping the underprivileged and maximizers kind of focus on the prestigious. So, you know, a maximizer might be able to help maximize the belief person in what they want to do, but they're not necessarily interested in what the belief person is interested in. Same with consistency. Consistency want to, you know, make sure everybody has fair, equal opportunity and chance and maximizers are kind of like, yeah, no, I don't really care about the fairness thing, I'm seeking greatness and there's not everybody is going to be great. Um, and then the restorative, of course, is the restorers who want to fix what's broken, where the maximizers enjoy focus on what's already working and, and trying to maximize it. Does that make sense? Um, maximizers connect best with those they can maximize. So they love achievers because achievers overachieve. They love competitors because competitors really want to win. Um, maximizers also really get along with other individualizers because um, it, it's different, but adds. It adds to their ability to understand somebody to be able to maximize them. I, there's a lot of individualizers who... Um, I'm sorry, a lot of maximizers who will reach out to me, for example, I'm not an individualizer, but because I'm a strengths coach, they reach out to me to get my help in understanding people because they want to be able to maximize those people. Um, I feel like I like didn't label this properly. Yeah, this should say connectors up here. I'll go change it. This should say maximizer connectors. Okay. Um, so maximizer, oh, yes. Sorry, uh, if you can go back one slide. Yeah, and let me fix I it guess. as I go back. Let me go back. This should say connectors here, like this. Yeah, but if you go um, to back individualization. Do what? Individualization, the third one. Yeah. Uh, it says analytical, oh, like yeah. to analyze while deliberative. No, like, I'll, yeah. re I'll rewrite it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is maximizer coming out. She's like, that does not make sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll fix that. I, I noticed another, another mistake I had up here, right here. Um, this should be, you know, maximizers. Sorry, I guess I didn't read my titles. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, go back. Okay. All right. So maximizers are not at their best when strengths are not being cultivated. People's gifts aren't capitalized. When excellence isn't required, when people are trying to fix one another, um, when best practices uh, 
are not being used and experts aren't welcome. Like I, I see when maximizers um, partner up with somebody who's really cheap and isn't willing to spend the money to get the experts that are needed or get the talent that's needed or um, pay the premium to get the premium, you know, maximizers do not like that. They're just like, are you serious? Like I can't even function in this environment. You know, as a maximizer, I'm willing to pay the premium to get the premium service. I want to be, you know, treated specially and I want others to be treated specially based on their gifts. Um, you'll, you'll see sometimes maximizers really, you know, look nice. They want to, you know, uh, dress nice and they will encourage others to, because they just want others to be at, at their best. I just watched, is everybody watching, um, that inventing Anna show on Netflix? No. Any yeses? Nope. Nobody? Not a single one of you? You're missing out. No. Oh. <laughs> because I swear she's a maximizer. I swear. Like just watching her and hearing her story and, you know, the levels that she took things. Now she was deceitful, but she was still a maximizer um, in the way that she dressed and, and uh, the way that she was um capitalizing on other people's talents and making them feel something. So it was really interesting. So everybody's got homework now. You get to go watch a TV show and, and see what a maximizer looks like when it's when it's used, being used for deceit. <laughs> okay, um, they are at their best when they're creating those legacies. They're putting those cherries on top. They're putting the golden apples on the tree. Um, they're helping others understand what they are, you know, best at and then how to, how to um, become an expert or become elite in that field. And um, yeah, they, they do great when they're in coaching, managing, mentoring, or teaching um, environments. Okay, so what they love hearing is that they're building that, you know, excellent team. They love hearing that what they have done is magnificent and that it is special and that it is elite, um, it, you know, maybe even exclusive. They, they want to know that what they've done is help somebody reach their absolute top performance and best potential. Um, anything else that you maximizers like to hear? about what you've done well. I relate a lot maximizer with quality. Yes. Right, so we love to do quality work mm -hmm. and we expect quality work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you guys don't like hearing uh, and this is, this is basically when you're flexing that maximizer muscle and then it's not going over well, right? It's not the right environment for you to be flexing that muscle and people get frustrated with it. They say you're exclusive, you're too picky, just do your job. You know, um, maybe you're too selective, you know, maybe they'll say experts aren't needed or you, gosh, you need to rework everything. Um, these are the types of things that, you know, when maximizers hear this, they get really turned off. They're kind of like, okay, I'm, that's not for me. <laughs> I guess I'll go do this somewhere else. I'll go take my talent somewhere else. Any other ones you guys would add to this list? Um, they really like to be acknowledged and recognizing for the, the elite teams that they manage, the best practices that they bring into the organization, um, you know, mentoring, they want to be known for mentoring the top performers and, uh, creating those, those lasting results that, that can be built on and achieved over a lifetime. Uh, they want to be known to have a, a group of experts around them that they can share with you when you're asking you know, for experts, either in, you know, experts in anything, it can be experts fixing something it can be experts in um, that you're bringing into an organization to help people understand something, or it can be, you know, just <clears throat> experts in, in helping you develop a certain skill 
you know, any of those types of experts. They usually have them all around them. And of course, they love being recognized for sustaining high levels of performance. When they communicate, um, they, they will show a preference towards, you know, the elite and they'll want to talk about top performance and they'll want to talk about top performers and what they are doing to, to um, be where they're at. They're going to want to talk about their natural talent. They're going to want to talk about their programs that they followed to get to where they go. Uh, they're going to want to see the measurements around that. You know, they're, they're going to want to focus on the, the neat and shiny, the, the sparkly stuff, the, um, like Sylvia said, the high quality work that's being done and how, how that's being achieved. I actually find them to be a little bit more quiet um, initially because they are very observant and they don't really want to engage unless it's a high performing conversation even. And when they do say something, it's very specific to help someone take something to the next level. So if we're going to work with them, we need to also know how to speak with them. And that could be bringing up certain topics like talking about best practices, talking about top talent, talking about what people are doing well. Um, it could be also making sure that you are focused on, you know, seeing them in a positive light and talking about what they're good at and making sure that you're not focused on their weaknesses or, you know, what's lacking or what they're not doing. That's not going to be really fun for them to, to discuss. These are some engaging questions you can ask them. So if you've just met a maximizer for the first time and you're just trying to open up dialogue and get the conversation going, then um, there's a list of questions that you can just start asking them and you know things that should turn their brain on and make their brain engaged and be interested in, in discussing with you. Okay, so if you are a maximizer and you are um, trying to sell a product or a service, there's lots of things that you can do using your maximizer to do that. You know, you can obviously describe the, in which ways your products and services are elite. You can describe why your products are exceptional. You can talk about the experts that came together behind the scenes to, to create these um, products and services, as well as like, you know, your exceptional customer service that you provide around the products and services. Uh, you could show metrics since you guys have a knack for um, tracking those performance metrics. You could show how the product or service capitalizes on people's gifts and talents and helps an organization use those. Obviously showing the quality of the product. And if we're trying to sell or influence a maximizer, we've got to do the same thing. We got to tell them why they, you know, why this product or service is going to help them get to that next level. We've got to, you know, share with them how our product or service is going to help them identify top talent or capitalize on those people's strengths. We need to show them the metrics. We need to show them we're, you know, we're elite, that, they're, that their whole experience is going to be heightened, you know, great um, during the sales pitch, great during the customer service time when, when you need to reach out and get help. Um, it's going to be, you know, a, a company and product that keeps growing and, and keeps trying to be the best. They're, they're going to want to be a part of those types of endeavors. So those are the types of things you got to show them. Okay, so if you're in an interview and 
um, you're not quite sure how to emphasize your value, these are some things you can do. You can talk about what you enjoy teaching, who you enjoy coaching, um, how you, the, the results that you've gotten from coaching different professionals and um, what their performance has resulted in based on your, on your coaching. You can talk about best practices that you always use. I have found that maximizers tend to use a set of best practices around, you know, process of processes, if they're interested in processes, articles, if they're, you know, an inputter and, and have access to really good information. Um, let's see what else. Oh yeah. You can provide a, an example of when you've transformed something into, um, you know, starting with something that was already really great, but you made it elite. You can talk about that. Okay, so if you're on the outside looking in and you're not sure you're dealing with a maximizer, um, ask yourself, does this person seem to focus on your strengths and gifts and try to you know, get them out of you or give you suggestions of how you can do something more with them. You know, do they always seem to want to take things to the next level? And does this person have extraordinary people around them and seem to not only attract greatness, but produce it? When you're engaging with them, the types of words that you want to use are you know, quality, maximize, transform, exceptional, extraordinary, superb, prestigious, premium. These are the types of words that just turn their brain on. It's also kind of an indicator of what, to, you know, what you should be talking to a maximizer for. If you're going to go, you know, engage or talk to a maximizer, then these are the types of things that those conversations want to be around. So if you are a maximizer, you always want to gauge when the best time your maximizer uh, should be turned on to actually maximize your strength. Because if it's turned on too early in the development phase or like when a whole framework was being built from the ground up, um, it can either slow things down a bit or it can frustrate people because it's just not at that point of being able to maximize. And maximizers are generally pretty good at that because they don't want to waste their time. <laughs> so they you know, do find when it is a good time to step in and when they're able to actually maximize. They have a pretty good gauge on quantifying, like, is this person ready to change? Is this business ready to transform? If not, then I'm not going to bother with it. We'll wait till they get to this point. Also consider that you may be partial to excellent performers and could unintentionally discriminate or exclude others. And I think like during those situations, it's just a matter of, you know, partnering up with someone who's very inclusive to make sure everyone's feeling a part of and included while you put your focus on the top performers. You do have to realize that not everyone holds the same standards of excellence for everything they pursue like you do. Um, so you could frustrate someone who thinks the work is good enough as is. And um, I think in these situations, it's, you know, sitting down with someone and just saying, okay, well, what, you know, what do you think is good enough? Um, and what do I think is good enough? And then how do we collaborate in a way that um, gets both jobs done and doesn't frustrate the other person? And since problem solving could be draining to you, your energy and your enthusiasm, it's always important to partner up with someone that has a restorative strength, for example, to take care of the problematic things um, or someone with high adaptability that can deal with, you know, um, a spontaneous, you know, problem that needs to be addressed right, right then and there. So if you're partnering up or collaborating with a maximizer, you wanna recruit his or her help to influence because they're very influential. You might ask them to manage a team, teach a group. I always think that, you know, around our maximizers, we should be asking them like, what could be maximized? Where could I be maximized? Like, you know, 
get, give us that perspective, that sight that you have of how we could take things to the next level. We might ask them for their, their experts or, or their best practices or have them bring those types of things into the group or the team. We want to make sure that they're also involved in interviewing wherever possible because they are really good at interviewing and finding you know, people who are going to be very good at the job at hand. And of course, we you know, as we're collaborating with them, we never want to focus on what they're not doing, what they lack or where they're weak. That's not um, something they respond well to. So I've just listed a few things for the maximizers here. You guys can go through these after I post them on LinkedIn, but it's just, you know, if you want to partner up with a specific strength, some of the reasons behind why you might want to. Um, for you maximizers, I know that you look at, you know, which of these strengths can I specifically maximize with my own set of strengths? Um, and so that's good. That's, that's one way to look at this. Then the other way to look at it is, okay, I also might need to partner with some people because, you know, of course, I don't do everything with my own top five to 10 strengths. So, you know, where can I help maximize the business or the team based on partnering up with people that don't have strengths like me? You guys sure are quiet today. Is it a rough Monday? Too cold to talk. <laughs> it's not Thank too cold to talk. All right. Um, if you're a maximizer who has relationship building strengths, you may be interested in maximizing your relationships. Uh, obviously, you want to focus on and enjoy um, Focus on what your partner enjoys and what they're good at to, you know, always trying to be doing things that help them and help them explore their strengths and help them have experiences that give them good feedback on their strengths so that they know uh, and are aware that they have those strengths and that they can potentially take them to the next level. You know, introducing resources and, you know, like, for example, like, let's say, um, you're a partner in a home situation, you know, just calling up the expert plumber, <laughs> you know, the expert to come paint the walls, you know, making sure everything looks really nice. Um, that's helpful. That's helpful to a partnership or relationship. I've seen maximizers that are really good with the finances and, you know, they take responsibility for that piece of the partnership. And I think if you want to, you know, maximize these relationship skills, it's really just finding and locating the, you know, the great books and the great best practices around building trust and relationships and building relationships and, and making sure that you're practicing those things every week. I added a new one this week. I wanted to see what you guys thought about if we looked at, you know, what it's like to parent with Maximizer the things that you could bring to your children's lives um, by having Maximizer as a strength. Do any of you have children and have learned how to capitalize on your Maximizer strength to effectively raise your ch children? I have kids and I think this is a great idea. I'm new to StrengthsFinders, so I'm in the learning phase, but this is awesome. Great. Yeah. Um, I, I think there is a parent strengths-based book out there, but um, I just wanted to take my shot at creating a couple of bullet points around it that I thought might help you guys. Any information on a parent who has a maximizer? Oh, that's the next slide. <laughs> I was thinking of you, Mariana, when I wrote this, actually. Um, so when your child has maximizer, you know, of course you got to avoid trying to fix them and, you know, focus <laughs> on their weaknesses and <laughs> focusing on what they're not doing well. <laughs> uh, it's really important to figure out what they love doing, where their brain is really engaged, what they enjoy, 
um, you know, what, where they enjoy spending their time. And then not only just allowing them to spend the time there, but to help get them the, you know, expert coaches around them that can help take them to the next level. Um, I was just dealing with a, a parent and child recently. And I say dealing intentionally um, because the parent just, you know, refused to understand the child and was really pushing him to do things he was not interested in at all. And um, he is very heightened with comp competition and maximizer and really only wanted to be spending his time doing um, something that would allow him to be the best and the elite. And, you know, the parents were wanting to go cheap on the school. And he's like, no, <laughs> like, I want to go to the best and um, wanted to be a part of the best programs. And, you know, it, it's just, um, I think it can be really difficult when you have a child who already has that frame of mind, but can't pay their own bills yet. And maybe the, you know, parents don't have the means to be able to, to do that for the child, but where, wherever they can to be able to support the child and giving them, you know, as much of the quality of, um, you know, the programs and the coaching and the attention wherever they can it is important. She's always said that the maximizer is the least one she sees in herself. Um, and really, I, her finding, looking at elite stuff, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but she's an activator as well. So I, she's, I guess she's already doing it. So I'm so not exactly sure. What are her other, other three strengths up there? Because she's obviously going to be then maximizing activator. What else? She's communication. Uh -huh. She's an activator. She's empathy. And her other one is woo. Such an interesting combination. I know. Yeah. So it's interesting because, I mean, she's, she, I mean, she goes into sales type roles. She'd obviously just be stellar because if she's maximizing her woo and she's maximizing communication and she's maximizing activator where she's getting people to, to do something and she's got that clear communication to set direction. And then she's just lovely winning them over. You know, and then on top of it, she's got that deep empathy to understand where they're coming from and what they need and, um, you know, what they actually care about. So then she's tapping into them from a feelings aspect. You know, she, she really um, would do well there, but then you also have to consider that she has maximizer, which means she's also going to like to coach and she's going to like to help others be at their best. Well, where is she going to help them be at their best? It's going to be around communication and woo and activating. So, you know, eventually she would probably highly likely become a sales coach, a sales leader and a sales coach to help other influencers influence. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's pretty exhausted by the time the day's over. Mm -hmm. Because of her empathy, I think she just sees that and she sure. is a, a natural uh let's go here, let's go there, let's go, you know, she's, she's the one that's leading the people to try new things, and, and like I said, she's, she has woo, and they're like, sure, mm -hmm. you know. Kind of yeah, thing. very social, yeah. and then starting things, right, that's, you, you just said that she likes to get things going, which is the activator, mm -hmm. um, but it should be, she should be doing things that are fun for her, and interesting, so that she's not so worn out, you know, it's like the empathy gets worn out when it is, having to do really deep empathizing with people that are sad, people that are hurt, you know, people who are upset. Um, so if she's not surrounding herself by that, she might feel a little more energized. I, I see it as almost like heading up marketing or something, or, or event planning within a corporation, that kind of stuff, whether you have to engage not only people and get in the event plan, but also once you're at the facility, and doing that sales and marketing job to draw people in to your whatever your product or service is. Yeah, she'd be great at a conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go on to the next one. If you are a maximizer and you are a leader, um, we've listed out some things for you to consider doing as a leader to maximize your own leadership. And I think that what's really important here is to make sure that you're leading efforts that you can maximize and that your team can maximize. You know, you need the bigger budgets. You need the um, expectation that the thing that you're doing must be elite and, and um, 
you know, drive excellence, because if you don't have that expectation of your team and of what your team is doing, then it might not be the right thing to lead for you. It might not be the right area for your strengths as a leader. Obviously, you're going to want to have a strengths-based culture on your teams so that you can help people maximize their strengths. And then I think as a maximizer, just understanding that because you do have a nature to be a bit more exclusive to, um, and by the way, Sylvia, you won't relate with that part of it because of your individualization. You're, you're very embracing of a lot of different people, just like, um, you know, developers are very nurturing as well. So you might not relate with that piece of it, but I have worked with other maximizers who absolutely are <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> um, and so because of that, if, if the personality is to be that way, then they're gonna have to partner with people on their teams or, or people within the organization that help others feel that inclusive to inclus inclusiveness and help others you know, be a part of the community. Like connectedness is a really good partner for a maximizer to make sure that everyone feels connected to the team and to the community, to the company. If you manage a maximizer, you know, you're gonna, uh, same thing, wanna get them involved on projects where the quality needs to be really high and where best practices need to be used. And uh, you wanna get that person coaching and managing and mentoring wherever you can. You want to give them some budget to be able to, you know, do something more elite with the program. And just know that they're gonna spend a, a lot of time making um, the initiative or the program you know, uh, taking it to, to the top. Um, I, I always thought it was interesting uh, when I was at Sabre, one of the CEOs, I was, I didn't know his strengths, but I could see Maximizer all over him because he, you know, set a stage and he set curtains and he changed all the colors all over the, 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 all over Sabre. And then he made this elite office upstairs and, you know, just took it to the, um, you know, nth degree. And I thought, oh, you have maximizer as a top five strength. You know, that's, that's some ways you can kind of see it. If you are coaching a maximizer, you will need to understand their um, level of perfection. The fact that they will not want to engage in something unless they can use experts. Uh, the fact that you need to make sure they understand not to get involved on projects and initiatives where there's a lot of growth and development needing to happen, that that's not a good place for them. Um, I was working with one CEO one time and, you know, he had been in that situation where he was in a turnaround and it was just killing him. It was just draining his injury. He thought he never wanted to be a CEO again. I said, no, 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 <laughs> you can be a CEO. Just don't put yourself in that situation. That's for a restorative CEO or a developing CEO. You need to be in a place that's already doing really great, but you see what they could do even more to maximize their brand. And then he came back to that and said, yes, I actually did that for a company and it was amazing. And, you know, he, he created an additional revenue whole line of business um, because, you know, he saw how they could maximize what they already had, what they were already doing great. So that's what we're looking to do as coaches is to help them realize where they need to sit in order to be at their best and then provide them with really, really good resources so that they can go do that. And here are some action items that if you are a maximizer, you might want to take on a daily basis to make sure you're investing in your own strengths. You guys, what other questions have come to your mind as we've been talking about this or observations? So just an observation is this is um, super accurate for me. Um, and helping me understand why I gravitate towards some things and are frustrated or irritated <laughs> in yeah. certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of reinforced, uh, you know, what, why I am the way I am and how I behave in some situations and why I'm more successful in others. Mm -hmm. um, I personally am really drawn to the coaching and mentoring uh, aspects. And I think this helps explain that, um, quite a bit. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And how do you qualify like who you're going to coach? So um, I find that I am a better coach when I am coaching what I would call overachievers and top performers. Mm -hmm. I tend to struggle with people who are you know, don't have aspirations or aren't, um, what I would just label go-getters. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's because we have, you know, kind of different definitions of, of what that is, mm -hmm. um, where I lose interest and I, I can't, I can't seem to reach them. And so it's right. just not a very effective relationship. I don't yeah. feel like I'm helping them. And I feel right. like they don't feel like I, they're getting anything from me. Yeah, and that's the most important thing to a maximizer, right, is to spend your time where you think someone is actually taking what you say or suggest and doing something amazing with it. You know, if that's not happening, it's not very interesting. Yeah, yep, totally. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? Anything else? I went and asked my maximizers what books they would um, suggest to recommend to you. And they said something very interesting to me. They said, look, they don't feel like they've read a lot of books that appeal to their maximizer, but they have read a lot of books that help them manage their maximizer. Okay, so I've listed a couple of books here that may or may not be interesting to you. Um, but the maximizers said they liked these. And remember, you've got different kinds of maximizers. You've got ones that are in sales trying to influence. You've got other ones that are working on processes. You've got other ones that are relationship builders. So different books are going to appeal to different ones of those. But what they're really looking for is those expert books, the ones that take their performance to the next level or enable them to take other people's performance to the next level. Are there any other books that you guys wish were on this list or you, you, know, you want to share with with others as a maximizer, what, what you really enjoyed reading? Okay. All right, so um, if you haven't taken the Gallup Clifton Strengths and you're on the call today, here's where you can go take it. It's on the Gallup store and there's different ones that you can take, but I recommend taking the, the big one, the $50 one for 34 strengths and getting all of those. Um, it does come in multiple languages. You can take it in any language and I recommend taking it in the language that you're most familiar with. And then there's an app. If you guys have a mobile phone, you can download the app. It's called Access and get additional insights on your strengths from Gallup. You can also um, you know, connect with my website that I've created. Uh, it's called strengthology.co and you can sign up, you know, put all your strengths in there and get a bunch of additional insights um, just like we went through today using that web application, if you'd like. And uh, we also have the YouTube channel that we mentioned at the beginning where we're going to put this recorded video. And we're also going to put these slides out on LinkedIn so you guys can grab the slides if, if you want to review them that way as well. There's a YouTube channel out there called Called the Coach that Gallup has put out that um, is great to get, you know, all kinds of resources on your strengths or, or researching other people's strengths. And then there's lots of books, strengths-based books that you can read. Um, everything I do with my business, 10% goes to Operation Underground Railroad, which helps um, go get those children who have been human trafficked. I love this organization. Um, so I'm fully supporting them as much as I can. It's a big reason why I have chosen to go into business for myself. And then um, this is my info. So you guys can call me, you can LinkedIn me, you can email me, you can um, you know, connect with my consulting services or even with the web app that we mentioned today. Anything else that I can do for you today or show you or anything you want to ask anybody else on the call about Maximizer? Right. I was going to see if you could go back to the two slides. Preparation for next time, please. I want to get a quick uh, snip of that. Uh, this one? Yes. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Yeah. Let me get one second. Here. How are you today, Steve? Are you doing good? Doing well, thank you. Monday for okay. sure, but doing well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and to join a little late, that tells you, right? <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I know you love getting to these sessions. Yes. Thank you so much. Got it. So please do go on sure. to note next. <laughs> yeah. yeah the no next problem. question, however. Yes. Thanks. Uh -huh. Anybody else?
Are you sure? Okay. I and have. Can you, oh, can yeah, Pete. Yeah. It's purely personal about an event later on today. So if you're going to call me as soon as you get off of this, I can uh, call you. Yeah. Networking event for a friend of mine. She's into human trafficking and big, big networking, having a lot of people show up today. So mm -hmm. you're interested okay. in going later on this afternoon. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for taking the hour and spending the, the time with us today. I hope you learned a lot about maximizers, how to work with them, or if you are one, how to you know leverage your strengths a little bit better than, than you knew yesterday. And if you have any additional questions, just let me know. Next week, we're going to be doing intellection um, as a top five strength and, and studying our intellects. So if you have questions for the intellects, bring them because we tend to... Um, we tend to um, we're a magnet, right? For the strength of the people that, that want to learn more about it. So, uh, and I also have intellect at my number seven. So you guys can ask me questions too. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. We'll talk to you soon. Thank, Bye, you. thank you. Take care. You're welcome everybody. Have a good Thanks, one. Randy. You're welcome.